Hi everyone, this is Adriana and we are joined here again with my grandmother, Caitlin, and this is our Heart to Heart Astrology podcast. If you guys are new here, we are grandmother and granddaughter sharing our heart to heart message uh, with mm -hmm. astrology and all the energy going on. And we split the video up basically into two parts. So we have two videos every month. So for this month of June, we're going to be focusing on the important astrological alignments for the first couple of weeks of June. And then for the last couple of weeks of June, we'll have a separate video. So stay tuned for that. You might be seeing this on actually the beautiful Galactic Astrology podcast or channel, I should say, um, by Julia Belaz. If Caitlin, if you wanted to tell your yes. Hear your news oh, <laughs> again. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Caitlin. Um, we have all of our quantum soul guidance practitioners uh, that choose to put their videos there. Uh, we are. I'm placing my uh, Bhakti Galactic Healing YouTube channel with them. And Adriana, you have your Starry Sky Readings channel as well. So we would love you to come over and check out our, out our channels because we have other videos that aren't posted on the Galactic Astrology. And if you're enjoying what we're sharing, we would love to have you come join our family of light. We welcome you. Yes, thank you all for joining us and for listening in to both our perspectives and messages that we have to share today. We're going to talk, just mention the solar flares. Um, we had an X 2.9 um, today. And I'm sure if you're feeling the results of it, you may notice you're having some dehydration symptoms. Um, it's just a, a huge amount of light coming from the sun. A solar flare is like a volcanic eruption on the sun. And if you go to um, Space Weather Live uh, with NASA in the U United States, by the way, I'm in the U.S. and Adri's in the U.K. coming oh, to you from right. yes. both sides of the world here, <laughs> across mm -hmm. the ocean. <laughs> but um, anyway, so some of the symptoms can be like foggy brain, dizziness, lightheadedness. These are um, the uh, dehydration symptoms that can be experienced during these high-level flares. Um, I definitely experience it. My husband... Uh, everybody I talked to is, has been talking about. It. I think it's a little more well known about because we had like 16 of them earlier in May, a huge onslaught, and then here it's come back. So we'll see where it's going to go. But um, we, we drink extra water. We drink uh, alkaline water and distilled water, kind of a <laughs> little bit of each across the day. There you go. <laughs> and um, and if you do a lot of uh, dehydrating beverages, really be careful because um, it just, all the symptoms, it can affect um, our bladders. I mean, just so many things. So I, people have been, I've been talking to are saying, yes, you know, I'm experiencing that. So once they increase their water, get some nice electrolyte replacer in there, mm. um, they are feeling better, you know? So I took mine this morning. I have had two huge glasses of water and an electrolyte replacer glass of water. Um, with the the noon and you you and tablets mm. <laughs> so yeah, that's actually, what I've I actually have a slight headache um it's probably from yeah, the solar it's from, too. Yeah, headaches, mm -hmm. yes. yes that's high on the list yeah fatigue uh, there's a bunch of symptoms you could mm -hmm. go online and look at dehydration symptoms and just see do I have that right now mm -hmm. and uh, take care of yourself self-care is important Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're always talking about self-care and the importance yeah. of it, aren't we? <laughs> we are, totally. Well, would you like me to go ahead and start with um, today, uh, what we're going to be talking about? Does that yeah. sound good? Mm -hmm. okay. So I would like to talk about the two Kazemis we are having in June. Uh, of, we're in 2024. Um, and um, there's the first ones coming up is going to be on June 4th. So we're very close. Um, so what is a Kazemi? No, it's not a new pasta from Sicily uh, that my husband <laughs> would describe. So, Sounds but a good. Kazemi happens when a planet conjoins with the sun. And it's at about 17 minutes of the arc of the heart of the sun. And when this happens, it creates a most powerful connection to, in its center. So this is known as a Kazemi. 
which translates as if of the heart, or I've heard the heart of the sun. It's so beautiful. So it is like the sun and the planet is conjuncting and becoming one being. Some of you may want to check your charts or Adriana, or I could do that with you. Um, you may have in your natal chart, a conjunction between Venus and the sun or other types. And that, and that if it's a really tight orb within that 17 minute arc, then you have a Kazemi in your chart. So it's worth looking into. It's really fascinating. So when this happens, the archetypal patterns, themes, and meanings of that planet are fully purified, strengthened, and illuminated, especially in that moment of connection. So you can feel the effects of this energy days ahead and, and days beyond the moment of the actual Kazemi. So again, June 4th is when this is taking place, 2024, um, the Venus Kazemi. And it's also could be referred to as the Venus star point. Um, and you could go online and look into that if you want to investigate it. And it occurs in Gemini uh, for this one. And um, this will inspire each of us to speak our truth from our hearts and express our deepest thoughts and feelings confidently, eloquently, and compassionately. With a Venus Kazemi in Gemini, we may become a great storyteller and focus more clearly on what we are learning, which will bring great value to our experiences. Gemini's superpowers are great communication skills and problem solving. The sun in Gemini helps us to shine the light on the best way to communicate what is out of balance, what needs to be healed, and where we, we may find the resolution. So Venus at Gemini may help us discover our own self-worth, also our ability to love, be loved, and be loving in many different ways. So I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to put my screen up here, share screen. Give me a moment. This is new for me. Only done it one time. <laughs> sure, everybody can see the great attractor down here. Um, this is uh, what I was done. And then we want to see um, where Venus is. And Venus is, where is Venus? Where are you? Right here. Okay. Right there is Venus. And here is the great attractor that I'm going to be talking about. Okay. So, um, so what is the great attractor? And right now, Venus and Gemini is at 14 degrees and it will be opposite the great attractor, which is at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. So this is the Sagittarius symbol here, great attractor. And again, Venus up here and Gemini. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Okay. Um, so what is the great attractor? It's a huge, super duper, super cluster, larger than our Milky Way galaxy, and has the ability to pull other galaxies, including our Milky Way, toward it. So when we have alignments in our natal planets and uh, the points and houses connected to it, um, then we would have, like, possibly you could have... Um, a conjunction with the great attractor, or in this case, um, there could be, well, there's could be sextiles, trines. Trine is like being in harmony with something. Sextiles is, well, we're not totally on the same page, but somehow we're going to get along really well. Um, so those are just gives you little ideas of what these aspects we're talking about. Um, but when we have a conjunction, conjunct with it, we can be a very magnetic person, have strong magnetic abilities. In fact, I personally have three conjuncts with the great attractor in my Jupiter um, with just a 0.20 orb. And my Saturn and my vertex are also, the vertex is our point of fate. And Saturn is kind of um, the structure in our lives. Um, and um, I have I don't have an opposition or a square with the great attractor. Um, and I was born a magnetic healer. So I, I feel a lot of akin and, and kindred spirit with the great attractor. It feels comfortable to me. Um, 
so the what is the magnetic energy that I'm talking about? It's something we can pick up on that could be around anything, people, animals, plants, gemstones, crystals. Um, we can feel these things and, and you can feel when it's out of balance. Um, so with this June 4th alignment with the Venus Kazemi and Gemini, it's going to be opposing. And that means kind of working against the great attractor in Sagittarius. So our magnetic fields could feel a little bit out, out of balance. So kind of forewarned is forearmed. So mark this date, June 4th, on your calendar and be aware of any magnetic forces trying to push or pull you away from your goals, whether arising from within you with sabotaging thoughts and feelings or others trying to squash your plans to move forward. The good news is, is there's more positive energy um, and positive uh, forces with this alignment. Um, and always remember, it's about perspective. Don't feel like it's gloom and doom. You can always change it with your thoughts. So let's do a little bit of questions and Adrian and I can talk a little bit about it. So look at yourself with these questions. How are you viewing your experience? Is it from lack or from prosperity? Are we in poverty consciousness or prosperity consciousness? Do you have a crystal clear clarity about what is happening? Or are you off in the cloud struggling to get grounded in what is truth with loving discernment? And another question, will you become the beauty, pleasure, and inspirational energies available during this cosmic alignment? So how do you choose to shine your light and love? We have that choice. What do you think, Adriana? Yeah, I really uh, liked the the word of uh, ex explaining it as magnetic. I just pictured two magnets um, when they're, yeah. you know, the opposite magnets and they're pushing away instead of connecting. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, that was a good way for me to think of that kind of energy going on there with that opposition. So, yeah, I, I think that really resonates, too, with what you were saying about, you know, is, is there certain things that we're pulling ourselves away from? Is there any sort of self-sabotage? with that oh yeah too, with our thoughts with that you know, Gemini there mm -hmm. yeah and yeah, how we're can so you get on, out of that mm -hmm. right well that's by being more focused on your own thoughts and your own in the inside of you versus out here if we're so focused on the person out here or a situation whatever um and that we become the victim and we've just stepped out of prosperity consciousness then. When we focus mm -hmm. more on ourselves, we have power because we can change those thoughts. Um, and uh, it's it's absolutely amazing if you start practicing that. You can't fix anything out here. Nobody's done it. <laughs> Let's face mm -hmm. it. If that was the case, this world would be amazing, you know? Mm -hmm. All pink, fluffy energy everywhere, you know? It, it, we would have <laughs> fixed everything. Kind of like your picture in the background. I like that. Right, yeah. Pink, fluffy <laughs> trees. Yes. <laughs> I'm over here in the weeds and things over here having fun. <laughs> So yeah, I, I, it's, it's all an inside job. I can't say that enough. It's like, mm. um, I've been doing this stuff for 30 years, close to 30 years with, um, healing work and, uh, every client student that I work with that they, they've heard this a bazillion times, mm. they share everything, they get it off their chest, they, they release and then boom, it's all an inside job. Yeah. <laughs> And the power of thought too is yeah. so yeah. powerful as well. Yeah. Your your own thoughts can be your worst enemy sometimes. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's free. Free will is a gift and it can also be a little bit of a curse at the same time. So mm -hmm. we, but we have that gift to go in and balance your feminine and masculine within mm -hmm. um, balance your light and your dark. Get the polarities balanced and your life changes. Out here mm -hmm. then become very different because you've changed in here. Um, in the Bible, um, Jesus Christ talked about, you know, the kingdom of God is within you. And then in, in the not so popular gospel of St. Thomas, it went, the kingdom of God is within you and then without, which means around us. 
So we start in here and then it appears out here. Also mm -hmm. pray as though you already have received another wonderful um, Jesus Christ quote from the Bible. So mm. yeah, good mindset to have. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's where so many people talk about the secret or, you know, um, create a visualization. Well, that's pray as though you've already received. You already have it. Yeah. All the Father hath is mine. These are all beautiful teachings mm -hmm. that are resonate more than ever now. Mm -hmm. So the teachings are wonderful to study. Well, it's like, okay. uh, like that song, money can't buy you love, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to an extent it can, but. <laughs> well, but yeah, I, have how to... many times? Yeah, people become extremely wealthy and then they realize they're still stuck with, with still their problem. Yeah. They just have more money, but and then they maybe even have more problems. Mm -hmm. More money, <laughs> more problems, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And it's more mm -hmm. like happiness has nothing to do with things on the outside. It's exactly. choosing to be happy. Yeah. Choosing to be choose to be wealthy choose yeah. it and make, then make you the have the time yeah, yeah make the best out of the situations absolutely. that you can absolutely yeah there's a lot going on with uh gemini this month mm -hmm. so i can actually mm -hmm. go into my next point now if you were finished Please. talking about this kazemi i know there's another kazemi you'll mention too um but yeah gemini has a lot going on we have a gemini new moon on june 6th so a couple of days after this Kazemi. I like that word, Kazemi. It does sound like a pasta, oh, like you said. <laughs> that's the uh, Sicilian in you. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but um, it's, uh, yeah, at 1.37 p.m. Uh, British time, uh, well, UK time, uh, 8.37 a.m. Uh, Eastern time for the United States. Uh, and this will, this will also be conjunct Venus and Gemini all at 16 degrees. So if you uh, have your birth chart, your natal chart, you can check at 16 degrees uh, where you have this, or maybe somewhere close to 16 degrees, as this can indicate in your chart where you might be having some new beginnings, where are some new things starting. So the new moon is a lot of new energy, new starts to things. It's kind of um, having you look at you know, with the full moon, you let go of things. The new moon, it's like you're ready to start back up again. Um, so yes, it will be all conjunct at 16 degrees. So you can check that. And it's part of a beautiful Gemini stellium. So what is a Ge Gemini stellium? I know we're throwing all these fancy words today, <laughs> but it's basically um, four or more signs are in a zodiac or four or more planets rather are in a single zodiac sign. So there's a lot of Gemini energy going on. So that's like Mercury energy, that communication, expression, even travel information thrown in there. Um, I'll share my screen now too, so you can see. So there it is. There's all that Gemini energy clustered together here with the new moon. Um, and it's actually, uh, it looks like there's a conjunction too to uh, hiatum, which is part of the Hyades um, mm -hmm. constellation. It's very similar to Pleiadian energy as Caitlin has spoken about. It's, it's very similar energy, very psychic energy actually, which is very, um, works very well with Gemini. So there can be a lot of psychic things going on. So those of you very in tune with your intuition and psychic abilities uh, you could have more experiences with that too around that time so um this can lead to what can this what is this bringing here so this can lead to a lot of information surfacing um i know i've been talking about this a lot but it, it's really happening a lot this year i talked about this with the pluto retrograde and um even with pluto um in aquarius too it's bringing a lot of um information out so we're seeing a lot of that on the internet and in media. So as we have said before in our previous video, just be very mindful of what you see and use your discernment. Discernment is always key. Use your intuition with all that Gemini energy here. 
this also can indicate a lot of mental activity. So, but mm -hmm. be mindful of information overload, overanalyzing, overthinking, similar to what kind of you were saying to not getting, you know, mm -hmm. too caught up in our thoughts where we're self-sabotaging or anything like that. You also may feel more forgetful at this time. So uh, take it one step at a time and breathe through it. The stellium will last for a few days. So just take it, yeah, one step at a time throughout this week here during June 4th, 6th, the rest of that week. Uh, so this new moon, again, is all about new beginnings. Uh, utilize the Gemini energy to write down your goals. It's a perfect time for writing with Gemini to write down your goals, even short-term ones, um, especially since uh, this new moon is, okay, so yes, it is actually conjunct um, the fixed star. So it's hard to kind of tell on this chart here, but it is conjunct the fixed star uh, Rigel. So Hyades, it might, this might be more so the Mercury here. But the energy is still close to it. But it is actually conjunct Rigel, which is part of the Orion constellation we've talked about before with Orion. And it's a very uh, powerful connection here. So it's a good one when it comes to writing down goals and getting things done, taking action. Um, with the uh, new moon conjunct Venus in Gemini, New romances and new beginnings and love can occur. I also get a sense of a very flirty energy, um, socializing, dates, all that fun stuff there. Uh, I'll actually stop sharing my screen now because we don't really have to look at it anymore. But for those of you interested in astrology, we like to show you the chart too. So looking at this this new moon's conjunction going back to Rigel and the Orion constellation, it exudes a very benevolent, favorable energy from this very bright star, Rigel. Um, it's located in the hunter Orion. The constellation of Orion is shown as the hunter. It's located in his leg, or sometimes they say his knee, depending how it's depicted. Um, so he brings us kind of a step in the right direction pun intended <laughs> so to speak so that any new ideas or goals that you are wanting to set into motion at this time it will be very favorable and will have a very uh successful outcome it is a very it's a star that has a very successful energy around it so uh definitely a good time to get that favorable outcome especially so when it's to pursue what brings you a sense of fulfillment so it's a good time for you to ask yourself, what inspires you? What can bring you more em emotional fulfillment for you? Is there something you've been wanting to do or pursue? It's a good time to, you know, start looking at those things and really seriously thinking about it. So that is what I wanted to share about the new moon. And then you also said another Cassini is happening yes. soon after the next week Oops, yes we're getting kazini <laughs> a double kazini <laughs> this one's making june extra special um yes with with all this we mentioned the gemini stellium it just makes you feel like you're way up in the clouds i mean i've noticed as soon as jupiter went into gemini on may 25th um i really felt that big time and um, and then with all the Pleiadian energies as well. And I just put out a video um, on uh, the Pleiades and I'm calling it Big Love. And if you haven't seen it, um, please join me at Bhakti Galactic Healing and check out that video. Um, but I'm going to talk now about the Mercury uh, planet that is at uh, 24 degrees Gemini is actually conjunct the fixed star of Enelum, and that translates from Arabic as string of pearls, and Mesa, which translates from Arabic as the shining one. Both of these stars uh, shine brightly in the Orion constellation. So on June 14th the, is the day of the Mercury Kazemi in Gemini. Um, you may feel a one-pointed focus, 
a very inspiring energy, which may help your mind feel brighter and you may communicate with more clarity. So Mercury is the planet of communication and it loves Gemini. That's its ruling. Uh, Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini. So there's a definite love between these two. Um, Virgo also is uh, in, in relation to um, Mercury as well. A little bit different energy there though. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the string of pearls, um, that came up with the, the star Mesa in Orion constellation. This one really stood out to me, um, because it could bring us an ability to focus on one pearl at a time. So you think of a, a beautiful necklace, one pearl at a time. So you could be like a jeweler with a specific lens to look right at that one little pearl looking for any imperfections in the pearl so the sun in gemini brings those powerful rays to shine through the an annelum conjunction that's the second star conjunction and point out a specific detail of importance um you don't want to miss um and that translated as the shining one so looking at that one detail so again, I think of detailed uh, oriented Virgo energies, which are also associated with Mercury, they could pop up on June 14th. Um, so the portals of wisdom may pour in on this special day, illuminating resolutions we may never have thought of before. So you may feel more connected to your higher self and receive powerful downloads, especially if you are a Gemini or Virgo, you know, I have a Virgo moon. Um, and I, I know that this will be a powerful day for me. Um, and, but those are the two signs that will get the most blessings. Um, Gemini is getting a lot of blessings this year with, with Jupiter in there too. So I would love to um, share my screen again, the positioning of where, what I was just talking about, um, so here's Mercury, the Kazemi here. Ah, so it's and like right here, over each other. Yes. And then wow. here's Mason and, and um, Enelum right, right there, right there, right across, right there. So that's what I'm talking about. So I uh, was um, guided to, I don't do a, the cards like Adri does. Adri's amazing with tarot. And if you should contact wow. her to do tarot reading for sure. But I, I do have like or, Oracle type decks. I have um, these Galactic Heritage cards by Lisa Royal Holt. And that's what I got guided to pick out. And I got um, Orion, the past with deep polarity. So we were talking about really the need to balance the masculine, feminine, the light, the dark. Um, and so what's interesting is those two um, stars are... I think us doing a little bit more of that string of pearls and the shining one is maybe our willingness to accept more of our light. Maybe we're not accepting enough of the light within us, always looking at ourselves like what's wrong? What are the imperfections? So I feel that message is very much about um, learning how to integrate more of your light into the dark. You know, we talk a lot about, you know, that, but it, that I think is what is really important here with this particular al alignment on June 14th. Do you want to stop sharing the screen and show the card oh, again yes. so we could get a close up? Oh, you can get a still. Okay. Yes, there it is. There, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Lissa Royal Holt Galactic Heritage cards. They're nice. Mm, yes. Yeah, I really would like to get those cards eventually too. I think they'll be very, very useful for galactic readings. There's a lot of them. It's a huge, you can't, you can't uh, divinate with a, the huge deck. It's impossible. <laughs> I've tried to do it. You have to pray over it and then go, okay, give me a smaller portion of the deck and then go through those. It's, it's huge. I don't know. There's, mm -hmm. I don't know how many hundreds of cards that are in wow. here. Wow. <laughs> okay. So it's really value. Wow. I mean, she gives you so much information and the book and descriptions are amazing. So much to learn from them. Mm. I know our quantum soul guidance group, uh, QSG, everybody loves these cards. They talk about them all the time. 
Uh, yeah, I can go ahead and share my tarot. Uh, I'm going to pull it live for you guys while we're on the call. Like I, like I said last time, I just think it's fun. If we have enough time, I like to pull it live so you can, you know, see the live pool. I do want to just give a little quick shout out to, um, it's called the, there's a shop that I went to the other weekend in the beautiful seaside town of Whitby in the UK. It was so beautiful being near the sea and uh, I just, you know, that's my, the mermaid in me. Yes. <laughs> I love being yeah. near the water. <laughs> yeah. So just being near the sea, it was so nice and refreshing. Um, we went to this very, um, well, I went into this really cute shop, which funny enough, uh, I didn't realize it until I spoke with uh, the lady working there she might be the owner actually um the shop is actually on a ley line it's right outside mm -hmm. of a ley line so you can really feel the energy you know yes. in that area so it's like it just pulled oh, you right yeah. into that shop too mm -hmm. um it's called yeah. the gutsy ginger that's the name of the shop very cute name the gutsy ginger yeah. and they were selling these um i was really looking for like a cleansing spray since i do tarot cards and i'm working with energy all the time it's so important to make sure you cleanse your space and cleanse yourself too because you're picking up yeah. on so many things and so many other people's energy so i just wanted to show you guys i have this beautiful cleansing spray it smells amazing it's lavender sage sweet orange um and then essences of uh gems of amethyst and clear quartz so very yes. um very refreshing perfect for cleansing so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going so there's like a little intention on the back to remove any negativity from my life cleansing my path so i'm going to go ahead and cleanse my space and cleanse you guys watching this so i'm going to give you guys a little oh, spritz too i'm ready spray me spray me <laughs> so remove any negativity from my life cleansing my path some for you yes i feel it Light my camera I wish I could. <laughs> there you go uh, send it out <laughs> it smells amazing yeah i wish you could smell it <laughs> pull my tarot message so i'm going to just ask what we need to know what message do we need to know for these first two weeks of june here yes and now I have my uh, cat joining me. He might, <laughs> he might pop in. He's, he's like, oh, that smells nice. <laughs> he's getting that good oh. energy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cats know where the, where the oh, energy yeah. is. They know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just shuffling my cards real quick. And funny enough, too, I'm using my Dreaming Cat Tarot deck. <laughs> oh, beautiful. So, uh, cat lady, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> for <a> mama <laughs> so what do we need to know for the first two weeks of june what does the collective need to know for the first two weeks of june what's a collective message for the first two weeks of june that we need to know what do we need to know for the first two weeks of june oh here we go Ooh, the Hierophant is out. Perfect with that uh, Gemini energy, information, uh, higher wisdom. This is a time Beautiful. of higher wisdom, accessing that from within yourself. I also see the world card is on the bottom of the deck here. Some traveling Ooh. or starting a new chapter in your life, like that new moon energy, new beginnings. What new chapter are you starting in your life utilizing your higher wisdom and all the knowledge that you have learned and maybe all the skills that you have acquired feels yes. very spiritual yes. too <laughs> very spiritual Beautiful. seeking out spiritual wisdom and guidance if needed okay so there is our message here if albus wants to say hello too <laughs> you say hi there he is my baby <laughs> it's grandma caitlin <laughs> yeah thank you for joining us that. the screen's <laughs> cutting you Aww. he's in the uh -huh. cherry blossoms now <laughs> we'll be uh, returning with us 
video for June. So please uh, keep checking us out. And remember that to subscribe to our personal YouTube channels, I'm Bhakti Galactic Healing. Yes, and you just made Adriana. a new channel. Yes, please go check her out. And then Adriana's uh, Starry Sky Readings. Uh, do check out the Galactic Astrology channel as well if you're watching it on mine or or caitlin's here too so you might find us from all three places we're a power of three now thank you so much for watching please like this video if it resonated and comment down below we'll see you in the next one bye bye, bye.